Number six, relationships, and this is a big one. You know, I think it's fair to say that, you know, we all know that love and connection is a, is a basic human need. And the reality is that in the absence of love and connection, there is always suffering. And, you know, I think in recent, you know, times in the last 10 years or so, um, even though we've become very connected socially via the internet and multimedia, the reality is, is that we've actually seen an increase in anxiety and depression more so than we've ever seen uh, in history. And I think the reason for that is because even though we're more connected electronically, we're less connected emotionally and physically than we ever have been uh, in the past. And so we've got to start to get back to some of the foundational principles about love and touch and, and relationships and the things that really make those connections uh, tick. That's just so, so important. And you know, when you start to see that you know, some of the measures they put in place for the coronavirus, social distancing and you know, not being able to congregate and spend time with your family and friends and all of those sorts of things, they are one of the leading causes of suppressed immunity. And so, you know, it's interesting to me that when we're trying to build people's immune systems to sort of ward off these viruses that are coming in, one of the things they're asking us to do is one of the most immune boosting things that humanity can do, and they don't want us to do it. So relationships, non-toxic relationships are absolutely everything. A lot of the times relationships break down because we come from a place, particularly over time, where we start to ask ourselves, what is it that we can get from this relationship? So if you think of your relationship in the beginning, uh, you know, pretty much, particularly your intimate relationship, or when a child comes along, you're first born, you'll pretty much do anything for that child or that, you know, that partner, that spouse, that girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever it may be. When you first meet that person, you'll pretty much do anything for them and you're just on fire and there's that honeymoon period. And over a little bit of time, we start to become a lot more familiar. And you've heard the saying, you know, familiarity breeds contempt. And, and so it's, it's just so important that we start to kind of pull ourselves up when we start to look inward and when we start to sort of lose touch with, uh, you know, how it is that we usually treat relationships in the beginning. Because in fact, there's a, there's a saying that Tony Robbins says, which I absolutely love, and that is when you treat relationships in the end as they were in the beginning, there will be no end. And it's just so true. If you think about your close relationships, your intimate relationships and the electricity that kept those going in the early stages. And if they've lost their way a little bit, then it's time to sort of think back to those things that really brought joy to that relationship in the beginning and to start to, to practice those things some more. Some little tips to help to really, you know, instill those great relationships is to, and it could be a business relationship, it could be a relationship with your children, uh, it could be the relationship with your spouse, but it's so important to create raving fans. I mean, you know, the best businesses in the world, uh, they're not just about transactions. What they're about, they're actually about creating long-term raving fans. And so if we think of our significant other as somebody who we want to be our own greatest fan, then the question becomes, what is it that we can do for that person for them to, you know, really feel that way about us? So it's just a little, I guess, mind game that you can play with yourself where you sort of start to look outside of yourself a bit. Um, you know, my love language is acts of service and my wife's love language is more sort of around gifts and that sort of a thing. And it's interesting because I like to give love by serving, whereas she likes to give love by giving, you know, little gifts and knickknacks and things like that. So we're all wired very, very differently. And so it's just important for us to realize that, you know, what's true for one is not necessarily true for ourselves. And the minute we start to look outside of ourselves, the more that those relationships start to flourish and grow and we can bring new energy back into them. One of the things I'd like to finish on, on relationships is this whole idea of polarity. You know, you can't have the yin without the yang. You can't have the black without the white. You know, if you've got steel energy that's in a relationship and it's infiltrating and it's sort of dominating a relationship and then the other person comes in and they match that energy with steel, then pretty much that thing's dead. It's not going anywhere. 
Whereas if you have somebody who's bringing steel energy or there's fear or there's anxiety or there's stress, and then somebody comes in with, you know, with, with a sense of calm and a sense of compassion um, and a sense of radiance, they bring that, they bring that balancing uh, mood to the equation, which really helps to bring that steel back down and bring everything back and connect it. So polarity is basically the realization that opposites attract. And you know, we may have things in common, and that's what keeps a relationship going. Uh, you know, things in common, but what makes a relationship really alive and really last and with fire is when we have those opposite opposing energies. Uh, and then finally, having that element of surprise, you know, realizing that uh, we need a degree of certainty in our life, you know, just to wake up every day, to have faith, to just know that things are going to be in a certain way. But when it comes to relationships, it's really important that we bring in that little bit of element of surprise, that uncertainty, you know, we do, do those cool little things for our, you know, important significant others and our kids and our business relationships that perhaps are just out of left field. And we start to, you know, add electricity to those, to those relationships as well.